On today's Photo Justice Photo Moment, we're going to learn how to bake cookies. Okay, bake might be a bit of a misnomer. We're not really baking cookies. We're not even gonna make a cookie, but I'm gonna show you a cookie that I made. Actually, that's a lie, I didn't make it. My former assistant, Tiana, made it, and it took her like all day, and I kind of blistered her hands. And Anyway, you'll see, it was, it was robust. It was quite a project, but it's a really fun result. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here on YouTube, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, talking about all things photo, video, live streaming, camera-ish related, you know, if it's on the camera topic, it's fair game to talk about. Good morning to everybody who's watching live. Love when you can tune in live. When you can tune in live, you get to participate in the chit chat. Take a look over here. There's all these chit chatters going on. If you are in the chit chat comment room and you want to get my attention, make sure you put at photo Joseph in front of your comment. And that way I'll see it. And I know that it is a question or a comment for me to look at. We're going to spend part of today out in the other studios. So I, I may not be able to follow. Actually, I guess if I tune this up, I can follow questions. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. We'll get it as we go. Um, oh yeah, and subscribe. I'm supposed to, Rand keeps telling me, I gotta tell people to subscribe in the beginning. Subscribe, he's gonna put a thing here that you can click on, yay. Okay, let's move on with the show. So today we're talking about cookies, not the yummy chocolate chip warm and yummy, okay, now I'm hungry, great, thank you. Uh, not that kind, but a cookie in, in the world of cinematography or photography, and this is really, I think, a term that's used more in cinematography, but by all means, it doesn't mean you can't use it for still pictures, is a, a term that refers to something that creates a shadow pattern. Um, you could also hear it referred to as a gobo or a go-between, although a gobo is usually more about just blocking light. You know, I've got a light that's shining over here and it's hitting this subject and I want it to block that, so I put a gobo, a, a flag is another term for that, a card in between to block that light. This is more about shining the light through something that has shape to it. It could be a as simple as a piece of cardboard, which is what we're going to see today. It could be a sheet of plywood. If you want to do, if you wanted to build your own uh, cookies that were permanent, things that are really going to last for a really, really long time, you'd get a nice thin piece of plywood, get a jigsaw, and you'd cut out whatever shapes you want. And that's the really cool thing about this. I'm sure you can buy these, but there's not a whole lot of point to buying them because you can make them for virtually free. Pretty much everybody's got cardboard boxes laying around. Anybody who buys anything from Amazon has cardboard boxes. And you can start to make your own. Just flatten out that box and cut holes in it to whatever you like. The one that I've got that we're gonna look at today is essentially a Venetian blind. It's really simple. It's kind of a cheaty, easy one, but I needed it for a particular job, so that's what it was for. But you could cut out leaf patterns. You could just cut out random holes, tears and holes and things, so just to break up the light as if you were shining through a tree or a bush or some other you know, non-constant, non-blocked light source, whatever. Uh, it's You can do anything you want. That's the beauty of it. And it's just a lot of fun to do as either a main, you can use as a main thing, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do a little portrait. I haven't told Ryan yet, but he's going to be our, our model today. Um, and you could do that as part of the lighting dealy on them, or maybe it's just something in the background. You know, you've got light in the background, and it's just kind of flat and boring and you know, wouldn't that light look cool if it was wouldn't it be cool if it was kind of coming through a window shade or there's a tree outside but there isn't okay well now we just set up this cookie shine the light through there and suddenly we have a shadow pattern on the background of wherever it might be so that's what it's all about i actually did a whole video on this as part of my linda diy training so if you haven't seen that uh, if you head over to lynda.com or just type in photojoseph.com slash DIY, it'll redirect you. But if you go to lynda.com and search for DIY photographer or search Photo Joseph, you'll find it. Um, I have a whole series. I don't even remember how many courses there were, how many videos there were. It went on for a year or more. There were a lot. Anyway, there's a whole maybe 20 plus 30 videos, something like that. Little videos that are all individual standalone projects. It's not a regular continuing series. It's each one's individual. And so you can... Uh, you can watch those to learn how to do all kinds of fun stuff. Anyway, so one of those is about doing these. It's a little bit more about making them. Uh, but today we're going to talk a little bit more about using them and uh, just, you know, show it again. This is kind of fun stuff to look at. Bart says, let's bring up the comments real quick before I head out in the other room. Bart says, in high school TV class, we used to shine colored lights through milk crates. Oh, good. And ladders to create interesting backgrounds for interviews. There you go. You know, who gets their milk delivered by milk crates anymore? How old are you, Bart Johnson Productions? Just kidding. You don't have to answer that. Um, yeah, that's a great thing, right? He's talking about those, I think you're talking about those big plastic crates that have kind of a grid pattern through them. Perfect. Shine a light through that, you get a funky shadow pattern. That's really cool. You could do anything. It doesn't have, even have to be something you build out of cardboard. It could be literally take a ladder and a broomstick and a blanket and just make a thing, something to create a shadow pattern. It can, this, this 
object that you create can completely block the light or it can let some of the light through. It's really up to you and what you're doing. And sometimes just breaking up the light into some random unidentifiable pattern is all it needs just to just to add that little layer of texture. But that's great, Bart. It's a great example. If you're doing interviews, you got a boring background, just make some shadows on it. And it's not like we're making shadows dancing. It's just, it's just a shadow, just to break it up and look a little bit more interesting. So with that, is there anything else I want to say? Uh, no, that was it. Oh, Barvin Fier says, we still get a milk person in real glass bottles. Yeah, but you're British, so it's different. Okay, let's... Uh, Let's go out in the other room, shall we? Oh, I better unplug this or I'm going to yank my earballs out. And let's go out into the other room. Here we go. Hope everybody's having a grand old day today. This is going to be fun. Ryan's going to be manning the camera out here. And I set up, it's kind of fun. I built a, um, a confidence monitor. I got a whole thing set up for that. It, we just finished setting it up yesterday. But then I tried to wire it this morning and some of my wires are crossed. So unfortunately, that is not ready to go, so I'm just gonna be hoping, oh yeah, do that thing on that one so I can see it. We're gonna be hoping that I get everything right today, but whatever. Anyway, uh, let's start with the cookie. Here's my cookie. Here's, oh, is a big one, it is a big one. So this is a big cardboard box. This was, this was a print delivery box, right? We got photos delivered, prints, whatever. Anyway, big flat box, and poor Tana, if she's watching, Thank you. Uh, cut these out. Cut out these little slits, kind of even slits in here to make the illusion of a Venetian blind. That was that was what I needed. I wanted this whole Venetian blind shadow type of a thing. And it's huge. I said, you know, go for the whole thing. So you, this is this is monstrous. Um, we're not going to use the whole thing today. Uh, obviously, you would need to use some poles to stretch that out. I've got this mounted up on a C-stand with an arm, but, I, you know, whatever you've got, whether you're tying it to a dining room chair or hanging it from uh, the curtain rods. You know, you could do, you, there's an idea, right? If you've got a window, you got natural light coming through, direct light coming through, but that's boring light. You don't have Venetian blinds, but you want that look. You make something like this and just tape it to your window. There you go. That's a, so many different options that we have here. So I'm gonna use this to create the shadows and I'm going to shine a bright and shiny light through it. Got my lovely Felix light set up here, and we're going to, uh, through the GH5, I put the Noctocron on here, get some nice tight portrait light. I'm going to do something a bit kind of dramatic. We'll do like a black and white film noir kind of a thing, because why not? Okay, so this is on, this is on, this is good. All right, let me, uh, I guess I'll put this on the other side. So let's just do that, get this in place. And then once we're all set up here, so I'm going to, let's see here, if I would do that here, and Ryan will be here, that'll put this, yeah, that'll work. So I'm gonna put that there, let's put these lights. I don't know if I'm gonna need both lights or not. I just brought them out both. We'll see, and shine these things through. So nothing fancy to start, just turn it on, turn it up. I don't really care about the color because I'm gonna do these in black and white because I think that'll be cool. And I am gonna use both of these because, hey, I have them, why not? Let's do that, nice big bright light on there. And we're good to go. Okay, so with any luck, is that creating a, a shadow pattern on me? Are we getting a good, is it like, is it a hard shadow pattern or is it a soft pattern? Probably kind of soft. Probably kind of soft. I can't see it, I'm, I'm relying on this guy to tell me. I have no idea what's happening here. Well, I guess we'll find out. I'm gonna, okay, why don't you come on in here, Ryan? You can be, you're gonna be my model and uh, assuming that's all set up. And I, how wide is that shot? Can you uh, see me over here? Yeah, you can, excellent. All right, go ahead and, uh, yeah, don't look into the lights. He's, don't look, he, all the time, don't do that. In fact, you know, I'm going to raise this up a little bit higher here, and I want a bigger, I want a stronger pattern of lights on you. Although that's pretty good. Let's see here. So, if I move these lights back, you can see that we're getting, you know, getting a little bit more defined line. If I get these lights closer, right, see the lines are diffusing a bit. So we want we want those defined lines. So I'm going to put some distance in here. So there we go. Put some distance on there. That's pretty good-ish. What the heck? Why not? Now. Clearly, let's see here, he's gonna, yeah, why don't you step a little bit closer this way and look towards me, because you're gonna be looking towards, that'll work. I think that'll do it. All right, let's uh, set up the camera, and then let's pull this back a little bit here. And am I still in the shot? I am barely, let me adjust this camera real quick. This is the fun of life. Ooh, look, I get to operate the camera. I never operate the camera. There we go. Yeah, we're off to a good start here. It's good enough. All right, let's get this thing set up. Let's get that up. Let's just tilt you up a little bit. I keep forgetting how tall he is. We're gonna go, we're gonna go. All right, let's go and switch over to this view. There we go, you are looking through the camera now. Excellent. Um, I'm gonna go nice shallow depth of field on here. Put this in manual focus and then move on us. And let's see, I wanna do black and white. So let's go into, 
or I guess I need to shoot raw plus JPEG if I want to keep these things. And wrong button. And the menu is showing up in there. Yes, it is. And let's see here. Let's go for, where's my, there we go, natural. We're going to go for mono. Isn't there a crunchy mono? Maybe it's that one. Oh, yeah, low mono. That's the one right there. That's what we're going to do. Okay. So that's, so we're off to a, a start here. So let me just get this picture to begin with. All right, hold still, smile. Look at you. There we go. So we've got some pattern on there. It's certainly not as dramatic as I think I would like for this. So we're going to need to, we're going to need to make some adjustments here. Um, oops, my presets, here we go, the right one up. Okay, so we're gonna need to make some adjustments. Part of the problem is uh, I, the shadow's not strong enough, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that. But also there's so much other light in the room because the video lights. So before I do the next shot, I'm going to turn off the surrounding lights so we have a little bit more drama on him, I think. Actually, let's just do that to start. Let's do that first. Let's go ahead and switch back over to looking through the camera. And let me turn off, oh wait, if I hit that switch, the camera will turn off. Oh, this is very well planned, wasn't it? Um, Shoot. All right, here, hold on a second. That's the fun of live. All right, let me, I guess. So I have uh, all these lights on a power strip. Maybe I don't have to turn them all off. Uh, these lights are on a, a power strip, but so is the cameras on the same one. I'm now realizing the fallacy of this, the, the failure of my ways here. Clearly not well planned out. There we go. Now we're getting drama. That's what we want. Okay, this is way cooler. So now let's go back to the camera view. And there you go. That's cool. See, all right, let's see here, without changing anything else in the lights, let's just see what we got now. Um, make sure we're focused on you. Getting there, okay, so now we're getting somewhere kind of cool. Turn your head, your face toward the light just a little bit, there you go. A little, a little too much, come back towards me a touch. Okay, split the difference, go back a little more. There we go, all right, let's do that. And yeah, we're getting somewhere. So I'm gonna take the exposure down. Let's bring the compensation down a little bit. Will you stop moving? <laughs> uh, go down, you're like, you just got taller. Spread your legs a little bit, you're a little bit shorter. There you go. Well, because I want your eye in the, uh, in the, there we go. I want your eye in the light. There we go. So there's an idea. Okay, so let's try, let's change this up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to make the, I want to make the slots, the slats, the slots. Slits. Slits, slats, slots, whatever. Slots is something you can yeah, sure, why not? Uh, let's see here, I'm gonna see, let's see what happens if I move this farther back. So you stay where you are. I'm gonna move this back a bit. Oops, and the whole thing starts to turn. Oh, and collapse, even better. This is why we use sandbags. Did I switch over to the right camera? I did, it's very dark, okay? I know everybody's seeing a very, very dark show right now, but that's okay. Well, I did turn the lights off, didn't I? That was very clever of me. Um, so we got that. Now, I guess I'm gonna, what I would really have to do, I should probably turn this on so people can actually see. Um, all right, just, let's just keep this in mind, Ryan. We need, to, um, we need to separate the lights from the camera. This is like for the next show. We can do that. All right, all right so let me position the lights a little bit differently. I'm going to turn off one of these lights so I don't have them competing with each other. And there we go. So now you can see, obviously, I'm raising the light there. So that's kind of cool. I can raise the light if he was a statue, and I wanted to make sure that, there you go, yeah, be a statue, there you go. I'm gonna put uh, one of the shadows right over his eye. Perfect, that's what I want. There we go, that's cool, okay, don't move. You are not allowed to move right now. Let's turn this light back off, and go back to the camera view here, wrong button, there we go, and nice. You are not moving. Cool, let's make this even more underexposed, make it super dramatic. Yeah, see, this is fun. Okay, go ahead and turn towards me. Turn your face towards me. You're allowed to move now. Turn more, turn more the other way. There we go, we're just gonna get the light just catching off the edge of your nose there. Let's, uh, let's even get a little bit closer here. Sorry for the bumpy camera work there, folks. And move that in nice and tight. Cool, okay, look a little more dramatic, serious. Hmm. Dig it, turn your head a little bit towards here, just a tiny bit, go back. Back, back this way, this way, this way, top. No smiling. Okay, but not blinking either. <laughs> and he smiles. <laughs> don't smile, don't blink. All right, one last shot, one last shot. We're gonna wrap this thing up. Uh, no, no. Come on, you should, be, you should be used to being a model by now. And last one, you ready? Hold it, hold it. Okay, you gotta stop moving. And there, digging it. Fun, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's fun stuff. Okay, I'm gonna go back in the other room where there's some light and uh, let's see what's happening out there. <laughs> 
Oh my God, what do you guys think? Was that fun? Was that? It's, it's a simple concept, right? It's a really simple concept, but it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. All right, let me put my ears back in so I can hear Ryan yelling at me, and uh, let's see what's going on in the comments here. So, um, it needs backlighting rim for those classic noir hard edges. This is true. This is true. If we wanted to really get super techy about it, we should add some more lights. But at this point, I just wanted to show with even just one light, one light source, one light cookie, what kind of things we could do. Um, I think it's, it's kind of fun to do that sort of thing. Um, so there you go. That's, that's, what, that's what I wanted to show you today. That's, that's all there is to it. Pretty simple show. But it's fun. It's entertaining. Think about the things that you could do. Think about the shapes that you could cut, the shadow patterns you could make. And they don't have to be huge like that one, right? That was a big one. But if you're doing, um, sorry, my ears are like all wrapped up. If you're doing, uh, if you had a small light source, right, which I had there, right? I had a small light source. And if you were able to, if the pattern that you wanted allowed you to put the light source close to the cookie, then your cookie doesn't have to be much bigger than your light. Right? It needed to be bigger if you want to have the light farther back. Like here on one of those hard shadows, quite often you don't want the hard shadows. So having a hard shadow in there would be to your disadvantage. So having the light, bigger distance between the light and the cookie is probably what you do want. So it's, it's good. It's good for that. Uh, Kevin Wright saying the Noctochrome is good for noir. It most certainly is. Kirk saying you got the Noctochrome yourself. You're totally loving it. It is a gorgeous lens. I know anybody who watches the show regularly knows that I call almost every lens my favorite lens, but seriously, that is one of my favorite lenses. It is, it is just, it's a gorgeous lens. You know, Desert Island? Yeah, that's one of the lenses I would take. Okay, although I probably should take something smarter than a camera in a Desert Island, but whatever. Anyway, so there's that. That's it. That's what I wanted to show you today. Um, sometime next week, with any luck, if the sun comes out, I will do the live show from the drone in the air doing the the uh, tiny world. If you don't know what I'm talking about, actually, can we just pull up my Instagram real quick? Because it is so cool. Um, where am I going? Sorry. Uh, it is such a cool little thing to do. And it's not the, the feature it's called sphere photography, sphere, something in, um, oh, wrong one in, uh, uh, in the drone software in the DJI something for DJI go Four app, but photo, there we go. But, um, it doesn't output that tiny planet file. It outputs a panoramic the spherical panorama, I guess it's called. That might be the wrong term. But anyway, you get a file that is not a file that you can show on its own. It's totally useless on its own. It needs to be further processed. So you have to have another app to do that. Someone told me on Instagram that I guess you could use Photoshop for it. Um, I'm using an iOS app called Theta. It's it's actually for the Theta camera that, who makes that thing? Um, I forget who makes it, but a little 360 camera. But it allows us to take in photos and do these really cool things for it. Really pretty slick. But here's, here's what I'm talking about. Uh, this is... That's the photo that I did yesterday down in Lithia Park. Um, see, there's me. Uh, it's called a tiny planet because it kind of wraps everything around. You end up like you're on this tiny little planet. And unfortunately, because the weather is crappy, we don't have blue skies. So the skies look really awful. So I just pretty much cut most of them out. Um, you can see a little bit of the artifacting down here from the wraparound. But then the other photo that I did, I did another one, went up to the winery, um, which came out really cool as well. So there's that tiny planet view of the winery. Really fun stuff. I just, I love it. It's a lot of fun to play with, and I totally want to show you guys how to do the whole thing. I think it takes something like 43 pictures. It's a lot of pictures, so it does take a little while. But, hey, we can always find things to talk about while that's happening. Uh, Jake Uptil says, I emailed you a pic of how I use a gobo to add a decorative pattern on our back wall at my church gig. Oh, okay, well, let me, uh, let me just pull that up. Is that, can I pull, pull that up on screen here live? Let me launch mail, maybe. Hello. There it is. And uh, we'll see what Jake just sent me. Ah, uh, let's see here. Cookies, nice effect. Ah, uh, Bart says, there is an iOS, up, iOS app called Tiny Planets. Oh, okay, that I've been using. It wraps around the bottom center as opposed to the center, so I'm learning how to frame up cool shots. Oh, interesting. Okay, I will look for that. I will absolutely look for that. Here we go. Here is Big Jake's photo gobo in use. Oh, cool. Yeah, perfect. Uh, there you go. There you go. Excellent. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. So that pattern back there is not in the wall. That is just a shadow cast on the wall. Perfect. Thanks for sharing that, Jake. That is a very good real-world example. I appreciate that. I will look up for that app called Tiny Planets. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, Kevin's saying, all the carving and stonework makes for some great shadows. Uh, oh, Kevin's saying, religious iconography works well in noir, too. Yeah, absolutely. So many fun things to shine light through. And Anyway. Okay. We're out of here. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Have yourselves a fabulous weekend. Um, hey, oh, before I go, I am... I will, sh I will give you more details next week once, uh, once I have actual URLs to share. But I'm going to be in, at B&H on December 7th doing a presentation for Epifan showing live streaming hardware. And then I'm going to be in Indianapolis on that Saturday. So what is that, the 9th? 
and I'm going to have some downtime, and I would love to do a little get-together. So if any of you are in New York or Indianapolis, uh, let me know. But think about it. I'll, put, I'll start something official at some point. But let me know. Put something in the comments. Let me know in the live chat if you are, or um, message me privately, whatever. I don't care. But I would love to get a, a little group together, a little uh, you know, photo moment gathering. It'd be kind of fun, because I'm going to have some free time in both cities. That would be a blast to do. Um, but that's that. Okay, I will let you know more details next week and also where to register for those events. Uh, the Indianapolis one is at Robert's Camera. If any of you are in Indianapolis, that's where that will be. And then, obviously, the New York one is B&H because it's B&H. All right, guys, uh, what time on December... Not December 5th, hey, you. It is uh, December 7th. Pretty sure. Yeah, six, yeah, 7th is the date. It's the Thursday. Uh, it is from 4 to 6 p.m. So uh, for those of you who work regular day jobs, hopefully that is the time that most of you will be able to make it. Um, is it that or one to three? So I went for the afternoon one. All right. Out of here, guys. Take care of yourselves. See you next time. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.